Good morning, everyone. Welcome to TC17. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, I know it's 10. It's still a little early in Vegas for me, I think. Um, but welcome. Uh, this is a session called Put Your Survey on the Radar, or On the Radar, Survey Data and Radar Charts. It's kind of a hybrid class that we're doing. We're going to spend some time talking about sort of how to structure your survey data, just a little bit getting it ready for analysis in Tableau. We'll talk about a couple of sort of use cases around survey data, and then we'll get into an advanced chart type called a radar chart, something that you don't commonly see in Tableau because it's a little bit of a pain to make, but we'll step through that. And then towards the end, we're going to talk about some advanced analytics that you can do with uh, your survey data, and I'll have a couple demos for that as well. My name is Zachary Ahrens. I'm a senior solution architect on Tableau's professional services team. I help clients get value quickly out of their Tableau servers and Tableau desktops. So all of the work that I do is really directed towards getting insights out of data as rapidly as possible. So the work that I'm going to show you today, uh, particularly around building radar charts, is I want the quickest path to get to them so that I can start reading them and getting value out of them. Where this class kind of started is actually at TC16 last year. Our professional services team has a booth down in the Data Village. Uh, we also had one last year, and we wanted to get an idea of where customers were in their Tableau journey, something that we wanted to call a maturity model. We have a little survey on some laptops that are here this year as well, where you can enter information about your Tableau environment, how accessible is your data, how advanced are your visualization techniques, how comfortable are you with it, how much support do you feel you have in your organization, we gather that data in a database and present it in a small Tableau dashboard that uses a radar chart to compare you to your peers that have also filled out the survey. It's a great way to see a lot of dimensions in a single view. So specifically what we're talking about today is, you know, survey data is fairly square. It comes off pretty cross-tabby. Cross we have lots of columns and not as many rows, and in Tableau we like rows. So we'll look at some ways of transforming that data to make it work a little bit better. We'll talk about radar charts in general. Are they OK? We don't see them very often. Maybe they're not OK. Maybe we shouldn't be making radar charts. Let's answer that question. We'll actually build them, and then we'll go on and see how far can we push our survey data. I'm here because of the work of a, a huge number of people. Steve Wexler is a Zen master. He wrote uh, The Big Book of Dashboards along with our own um, Andy Cotgrave. He's down in the Zen Master little village in Data Village, and he is basically the guy for doing survey data on Tableau. If you use Qualtrics, definitely look up his blog at Data Revelations, and he gives you specific step-by-step -step instructions on taking data out of Qualtrics, which is a very popular survey system, getting it ready for analysis. He also has some excellent tips about extending your data and joining it so it's just ready to go. We'll actually look at some examples of visualizations that he's built that really are the standard. All right. So digging right in. Why are surveys square? So survey data generally comes through in a format that we like to think of as fairly human readable. It looks something like this. This is an example of just some, some restaurant data that I made up. We have each respondent is represented by a row. And then each column represents either metadata about that respondent or their actual responses to the questions. So in this case, I have the respondent's name and metadata, who they are, and are they a repeat customer. We could have other things like where they live, maybe their age, some other demographic information. And then the green represents each of the responses to their questions. This is the actual data that we want to visualize. Tableau would much prefer this in a row format. I'd like to have this metadata represented on every row, but these green areas, these measures, represented in a single dimension. Something more like this. If we're used to Tableau, I now have question as a blue pill or a dimension that I can pull out on my view and, and start working with right away. And we have to set it up this way to build a lot of our advanced visualizations. So I'm going to dig in, and we're actually going to do this. OK. 
Okay. So I'm going to, I'm here in Tableau Desktop 10.4. I'm going to connect to my data. The data that I'll be working with today is a commuter survey from the city of Seattle. It looks at a number of respondents, large businesses in the Seattle region, where they're commuting to, and what method they're using, whether it's carpool, van pool, whether they're walking or driving alone. Currently, it lives in Excel, and it's right here. Okay, this is the table that I'm using today. I'm just gonna drag that onto my view. And if we look across the top, I see my problem. My data is in this, this wide format. I have a row for a respondent. I have their location. I have the total number of trips that that respondent or that business had. And then I have all of these measures. How many drove alone? How many took a motorcycle? How many took a carpool? So in Tableau 9, we introduced this ability to de-pivot data, or we call it pivot data, so that it's in the format we want for analysis. It's pretty straightforward. I just highlight my columns, scroll over to the end, highlight my last column, so these are the groups that I want to pivot, right click, and say pivot. I now have two new columns, one called pivot field names, so these are the questions that were asked, and one called pivot field values, these are the actual responses. It's really that straightforward. I can go straight to a sheet and I can still recreate that cross tab, that nice easy human readable format if I need to, just by grabbing my pivot field names, these are now my questions as columns, my pivot field values, there I have all of my averages, excuse me, my sums, we'll fix that and make those averages. And if I want, I could even grab respondents, put them on rows, and I'm back to this full sort of Excel crosstab environment. We could take this further and turn it into a heat map. Yes, you had a question? Yes, yes, so that's an excellent question. Uh, the question was, do you only pivot if they're on the same scale? And yes, that's, that's very true, we want to be able to work with these in the same way and, and write the same computations for them. If they were on different scales, we would have to pivot them separately. And we can do that in, e in an ETL process outside of Tableau. And I'll walk through a couple options actually of doing that uh, in just a moment. So depivoting is really that straightforward. It's not, uh, it's really easy to do in Tableau, which is great. If your data is living in a database, or you have an issue where you're going to have multiple pivots that you need to do, we have some options. We have the unpivot command that exists in Microsoft SQL Server or Oracle. There are also functions in Postgres and most major databases that let you write custom SQL or something as a part of your ETL plan to get that data in a nice shape for Tableau to work with. We have a couple of really popular survey data sources out there. Qualtrics is one I've mentioned before. They're sort of the big player in that game. They have something called a web data connector for Tableau. Tableau introduced this feature also back in Tableau 9. It lets you call APIs that live out on the internet and get data from other sources. Qualtrics has built a web data connector so you can pull your survey data directly into Tableau without having to drop it into a file or go download it manually. SurveyMonkey has a similar system. There's a web data connector that you can connect to your specific surveys and pull that data right into Tableau. All right, let's start talking about visualization in general and really, really radar charts here. So, radar charts are okay. They're interesting to look at but in this case, I'm not really getting much in the way of insight here. My, my blue shape is my average responses. This is, again, that, that similar restaurant data. And this uh, orange shape is a single respondent, so I can see how she compares to the average. I don't see how this is really any better than something like a bullet chart. Uh, bullet charts are super easy to make. It's one or two clicks. They're on show me, even. In this, I can see the responses uh, for our Audra. I can see that she thought that uh, decor was nice. Um, she had a couple of things that were very high, and I can compare her to her averages. This is really easy to read. 
Where this starts to fall apart, at least in my mind, is when we start adding more and more dimensions on the view. I want to know, OK, let's divide this up by repeat customers. Let's divide it by what serving they were, breakfast, dinner, or lunch. Let's try to add some color so my eye can follow and group these together. But it's becoming a bit confusing. I can't easily compare breakfast uh, from one group to the other because they're now horizontal rather than vertical. It's harder for me to compare across dimensions. And this is where radar charts actually start to shine. Because visually, we're very good at pulling out shapes and seeing differences in shapes. When I start having lots of radar charts on my screen, I can start to pick out, oh, well, that first column there, which is the breakfast serving, it's a little bit flat. Now, I don't know exactly what these dimensions are because I'm looking at you know, a lot of different things, but I know that something's up with breakfast. And I can see that uh, on my, my left column here, whether they're a repeat customer, no or yes, it's going across both of those customer types. Radar charts are a great way to look at a lot of data in a small space and then guide you to your next step in visualizations. What's your next step? Well, you'd probably dig in and have something like a Likert scale chart. This is something we see a lot when we look for survey data on the web. I'm going to break here and actually just pull up my browser. So on Tableau.com, we have a great white paper on visualizing survey data. Uh, it was written by Steve Wexler, who I mentioned before. And he goes through both some of these transformations and different ways of building out visualizations specifically. And this is really uh, the most common visualization type that we see when dealing with survey data, particularly what's called a Likert scale or something like a one to five. One is I'm not satisfied, five is I'm very satisfied. These stacked bars are a great way to tell both the proportion of respondents for each, each type, one through five, and to compare across different dimensions. Very, very common. But if I'm comparing a lot, again, adding more and more dimensions onto this, I want to know which seating they were at. I want to know are they repeat customers. I want to know their age bracket. These start to fall apart because I'm, I'm running out of room to drop things onto my view and to easily compare. But again, starting at a radar chart, I can find where I need to dig and then go to a scale like this and get the details that I need. I'll show you one more of these that I kind of like. Uh, this is a net promoter score, uh, similar concept. So how, how much is someone contributing to a certain metric? Again, these, this idea of stack bars, the blue are positives, the oranges are something we think of as more negatives, and the gray is the neutral, and you line right in the middle of the neutrals. Lots of good demos of building these online. I'm not going to walk through them today. But I'd like you to think about this is your next step when you go deeper. OK, so back to that uh, story I briefly told in the beginning about a maturity model. So again, Tableau Professional Services, we wanted people to fill out a small survey and, and get a radar chart because they're interesting to look at. What we did is actually combine bullet charts and a radar chart. So you have this ability to quickly read down your dimensions and see how you compare, but also see if there's anything radically wrong with your shape. In this case, the gray uh, box represents you. Or, I'm sorry, the gray box represents the average, and the blue box represents you. So we can see for, in this case, question three, uh, this respondent is a little deficient. They're more towards the center of that chart, whereas the average is a bit rounder. So you get that quick insight and then can go dig into the detail. All right. So let's actually build some radar charts. To do this, we have to think in circles. Radar charts are round. Sometimes they're kind of boxy-ish. They can be triangles. But we think about them in circles. Tableau doesn't think in circles. I mean, we think in bubbles sometimes, and we think in word clouds. But we don't have this concept of polar coordinates, which is what you need to draw something round. Luckily, we have things like Wikipedia and Google. And we can go ask the question, how do I convert Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates? And we get these equations. I don't have to understand these equations to use them in Tableau, which is great. We have the functions sine and cosine. I just need to know what are my variables that I'm going to put in, or what pills am I going to put in my calculations for this to work the way I want. So in a radar chart, 
Each angle, so each leg of that chart, represents a dimension or a question that I've asked. So my dimensions are going to be the, the character theta, or the input theta here, so that red circle. R is my distance from the center. So in a radar chart, the further you are from the center, usually the higher the value that you're representing. So R is going to be my, my measure, the thing that I, I pivoted out. Let's go ahead and drop these in Tableau. And I also want to say these workbooks will be available for you uh, after the session. You can download the workbooks. You don't have to rewrite the calculations. You don't have to memorize any of this. What I really want to give you is just a sense of how to work with these in a way that you can get these insights quickly. There's kind of an 80-20 rule in uh, really everything, um, particularly in the radar charts. We can do about 20% of the work to get 80% of the insight. The next 80% of the work is making them look really pretty. And that's actually a bit more challenge, but there's not as much value in it. So this is my same survey data. I've uh, already pivoted it. I've done a couple of name changes just to make it easier to read. And I've added in the calculations that we need. The two primary ones that I've added are angle, that was that theta value, and the distance from the center, that's that R value. Let me show you what these look like. that a little bigger. This one's kind of, this one's kind of nasty. We have, you notice we have the, the function pi in here. Tableau defaults to using radians for its trigonometry instead of degrees. Do I have to know how to convert radians and degrees? Not really. Just know that you have to use the pi function. We already wrote it here and it's simple to look up. What this function does though, to be a bit more usable, is that it counts the number of dimensions for you using an LOD, a level of detail calculation. And then we'll drop this function on a table calc. So for each dimension, we'll increment that angle around the circle to make our legs of our radar chart. This is one method of doing it. I should say that if you go out on the internet, there are many, many examples of radar charts. And in fact, there's a session that I'll point you to right after this one where they will likely use a different method to build radar charts. This is one that I like because I don't have to put in how many dimensions I'm measuring at the beginning. And I can easily filter out dimensions that I don't care about. For example, in my restaurant data, maybe I don't care about decor. So I can filter that out and my radar chart will automatically update. Other methods that give you really pretty radar charts make you put in quite a bit more data. So this is my angle. My next piece is distance from the center. So this is my R. This one's nice and simple. It's just the value that, that I want. It's just my measure. In this case, I'm using average because I'm looking at the averages of these scores. And I have a um, column called rate normalized. So the data that I have isn't on a nice clean one to five Likert scale. It's a percentage of people that commuted. So I've put that on the scale from one to five to kind of make it a little more, a little more visible. And then I have these last two calculations, an X and a Y. Right, Tableau thinks in squares, columns and rows, X's and Y's. So this is that equation that we looked at earlier. Here's our trigonometry. Distance from the center, that's our R, times the cosine of our angle. That was the theta on that, on that equation. My Y is the exact same thing. Well, except with the sine in it. So distance from the center times the sine of that angle. So let's start drop, dropping these things on views. I'm gonna throw my, actually, I'm gonna start by getting my angle onto detail. I need the angle there so the Tableau knows to start running across those dimensions. So we'll set our table calc in just a moment. The other thing I need is my commute type. These are my questions. What type of commute did you have? Did you take a bus? Did you drive your car? Did you walk to work? I'm also going to put that on detail. Now what I need to do is tell my angle to be a running sum across my commute type. So what this will do is it'll work its way around the circle for each question and start drawing our values for us. So I'll drop my x on columns, 
drop my Y on columns. You'll notice that these are table calculations as well, but they're picking up because they're using angle, they're using the correct table calc for us. Tableau gives us some points. Well, what are, what are these? There's some dots. Are they kind of random? I think they look like a fish. Maybe a little bit. Um, but this is actually our radar chart. There's just no lines connecting it, and, and we're not quite square yet. So we have a little more work to do to make this look the way we want it. Let's go ahead and change our mark type to a polygon. That's not quite right either. Let's go ahead, now that we have a polygon type, we have a path, we're gonna drop angle on that. I'm moving kind of fast because you're not gonna remember all of this. <laughs> Again, you'll be able to download the workbooks, but I wanna show you sort of these are the steps that you'd wanna think about. Transforming your data, writing these math calculations, you'll probably have a quick table calc, and then you'll need to make sure you have your path and marks type right for this to work. So this is sort of a start of a radar. It's kind of, kind of floppy shaped. It's not really round the way I'd like it. That's because my axes are not square. Circles are, are round. Radar charts have this, this even side. They're, they're not ovals and they're not tall and skinny. So we need to go set our axes, our axes to square rather than automatic. I know my scale is a one to five, so just to be safe, I'm going to set this from negative five to positive five. It's probably a little bigger than I need it, but I'm okay with that. I'll do the same to my x-axis. Negative five to positive five. There we go. It's a little bit better. There's obviously some data in here that's pretty spiky. Anyone care to guess what's gonna be spiky in, in commute data that talks about how people get to work? Give you a hint, driving alone, well, I'll give you the answer. Driving alone is one of these big spikes. Riding the bus is another big spike. This data is for downtown Seattle, so we see a lot of, a lot of bus riders in it. Okay, so we've made it this far. We have, we have something around. We have something that's kind of like a radar chart. We should do a little more work, though. We have these grid lines in the background that's not really relevant to a round chart, so let's throw those away. Let's go to format and turn those off. And, and we're kind of there. Now, I don't really know what these points represent. I can hover over them, so I'll hit this point, and oh, that's my drive alone rate. That's a pretty big spike. But I can't really, radar charts are hard enough to read without having some kind of a label on them. To do that in this technique, we're going to make a dual axis chart. I can't label my points on a polygon, it's just something that Tableau doesn't like to do. So I'll just drag out my X one more time, so now I have two copies of the same chart. I'll go to my marks card for that chart and change it from polygon to circle. And then take my commute type and drop it on label. Now when I bring these back together using a dual axis and synchronize my axes, I have some labels for my, for my points. We're almost there. We almost have something that you could call a radar chart, <laughs> that you might identify as one. Already though, I'm getting some insights in this, right? Overall, all of my data, I see that there's a big spike for drive alone, there's a big spike for bus rates, carpools kind of sticking out there, that's interesting. If I wanted, I could start dragging out other dimensions and doing some actual analysis. Looks like I have year in here. Let's maybe drop years up on columns and see how that looks. So between 2015 and 2016, these shapes look pretty similar. I might dig in deeper if I wanna look for small changes, but there were certainly no large changes in the data. Well, what else do I have in here? I have business office location. So these are the neighborhoods that people are commuting into. Let's drop that on my view and, and see what that looks like. Now we're into these great small multiples. Looks like my points are a little bit big. I'm gonna shrink those down. And actually, I might even turn those labels off and just look at shapes. So these are different neighborhoods in Seattle. I have downtown, South Seattle, Northgate, Fremont Green Lake, home of Tableau software. And what do I see in my shapes? Well, I know that that little left-hand shape is drive alone, the one that's pointing down. And I know that bus was sort of that tall one up, just kind of remembering that. There's kind of this weird lump, though, over in Fremont where, uh, where Tableau lives. 
Notice it has this sort of, this sort of bump, bump out shape here. It's not as spiky. So this spike is, is bus rates. So that Fremont doesn't have a lot of bus riders. Maybe it's something along the top here. Oh, bicycle rate seems kind of high. And this walk rate is pretty high. Fremont's a very walkable neighborhood. A lot of people that work at Tableau uh, live, live near the business. There's some other businesses similar size to Tableau uh, in the Fremont neighborhood. It sounds like they walk too. Again, I'm getting really quick insights. It's not necessarily pretty, but I know where to start looking. I might pull in some data around a walkability index for a neighborhood and blend it in with this and start building out you know, more traditional visualizations to dig in deeper in my analysis. But I have this great high-level overview, and I'm looking at a lot of dimensions. There are actually 13 different dimensions for my commute data, whether it's bus, motorcycle, walking. And I've pulled out another dimension, which is this location. And I'm looking at all of them at once. In fact, I can throw yarn here, and we'll just do one more. We can really start pulling out things that, that just don't look right, and then take it to the next level. We do have one more thing to do to really get this to look a little bit more radar-y. We, we need a grid. We need some way to really know that this is a center. Sometimes radar charts are called uh, spider web charts because they sort of look like a spider web. And there are a number of, of techniques to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this, these guys off. Uh, there are a number of techniques to get a background. You can actually draw them natively in Tableau if you transform your data a bit and write some, I think, kind of ugly calcs. They just feel, they feel hacky to me. Um, but they're very pretty. Everything is just, it's, it's pixel beautiful, high resolution displays, they look perfect. If you're going to have something for a kiosk or something that you're gonna show, you may go spend the time to do that. The easy solution is to put an image background that matches your radar chart. And I'm gonna admit, um, you can Google radar chart backgrounds and you get some iffy results. There's a little tool that some of you may have used called Excel. And Excel does radar charts natively. So I went into Excel and made a blank radar chart and grabbed that to use as my background. Why didn't I just do all my radar charts in Excel, you might ask. I was briefly asking myself that question. <laughs> Well, in Excel, I can't go and, and drag, drag all this dimensionality out. I can't connect back to a database and have it update live on a very regular schedule, right? It's a one-time analysis in Excel, whereas what I can build here is sort of a sustainable analysis. Okay, so I'm gonna add an image background, and that image is going to be my grid. In Tableau, I go up to the menu bar, I select Map, because that's what you select. <laughs> I go to background images, and it's going to list my different data sources. So if I have multiple data sources in my workbook that I'm working with, I want to use the primary one that I'm, I'm building my visualization and my accesses off of. And you'll see why in just a moment. I can have multiple images. There's actually some cool techniques to swap out backgrounds depending on what you're doing. They come in handy uh, for like, building surveys we wanted to have room maps for every level here at the conference center, there's some cool techniques to swap out the background images. We're not doing that today. I'm gonna to go ahead and add my image called background. And now I need to tell Tableau a little bit about this image. Tableau needs to know where it fits on my XY scale. Is it going to be centered in the middle? Is it you know, one, one point wide by one point tall? Is it supposed to be stretched out? Does my scale go out to 100, even though my visualization is going out to five? Tableau doesn't know, but I can tell it. I can say I'm going from negative five to positive five, because that's what I fixed my axes on. So I'll just put those in. And now Tableau knows how to size this image to use as my background. There we go. That's a bit better. I can see my angles a little more. Uh, in this one, I don't have the little lines that come out from the center. They're sort of a visual choice. It's up to you if you want to use that or not. And we're going to go ahead and turn off these headers because they're not really relevant anymore.
I'll go ahead and turn my labels back on. There we go. That's not a bad radar chart in 15 minutes. And again, we can continue to, continue to drop dimensions on these and still get that same analytics flexibility and that image in the background that makes it a little bit easier to read. Other things that we can do while we're here, if I want to drop something like maybe cycle year on color to see if there really are any differences, Tabula will stack these for me. And you can see it's automatically colored 2016 to orange, 2015 to blue. And I can see a little bit of orange peeking out there around the label that is train rate. Apparently in the entire region, the train became slightly more popular. Uh, and the walk rate went up just a little bit. If I apply a little bit of transparency or reduce my opacity, I can see through these and see if there's any other interesting intersections. I don't really, I don't think so. I think 2015 to 2016, there wasn't a lot of commute change in the region. I can also do something like grab my respondents. So this is every business that responded. I could drag that onto color and get this great stacked view. I don't know that this is as, as useful particularly. It seems like there's, there's just so much going on here. I kind of see this mash of gray in the middle that sort of looks like my overall average. I can see you know, particular spikes might stand out. This sort of beige color has an interesting shape. It looks like there's very little drive alone for whoever this business is. Um, so I can start to pick things out. I, I don't find this particularly valuable though. What would be valuable would be taking this to another level where I could pick a single respondent or a respondent type and compare it to the overall average. All right, that'd be really useful. So I could, I could really make rapid comparisons between those. I'm just gonna pop back to my slide deck really quick here. So we walk through our background and the two methods for doing that. And now we're going to, uh, to build out a comparing it to average. So there's a number of ways of doing this. If we were building traditional charts, we'd use a level of detail calculation, right? They're great. They've been around a while. There's tons of examples out there, both on tableau.com and on the web. Uh, but we could use LOD calculations here. But they tend to get a little, say, a little hairy because we have a table calcs and we're making everything round. So I'm not going to show you how to do that today. But traditionally, that, that's where we would go to do that. We could also overlay transparency. Uh, so that was the demo I showed where we just pulled out all the colors and tried to find sort of the gray blob in the middle to see if, if that gives us an average. Again, it might be good enough if we're looking for things that are very, very different. The other trick we can use is something called a self-union. These used to be hard. You had to write custom SQL or have a database to do them. But in Tableau 10, I can do it right in the data pane. What I'm going to do is take our data, make a copy of it to itself at the bottom, so I'm doubling my data, and I'm going to call that copy the average. We'll write a quick little calc to do that, and we'll have an average available to us. So let me step through that right now. I'm gonna keep building off of this view because uh, well, nothing's broken yet, so it seems like I've, I've memorized my clicks pretty well. I'm gonna right click on my data source and go to edit, come back to the data pane. And now I wanna do this union. I wanna copy this table right on top of itself. And I'll just do that with a drag and drop. I'll hover over and I get this drag table to union message. And I'll drop it right there. So what Tableau's done is just do a union function for me and it's added a convenient column called table name. So if I was unioning two different tables, maybe I had one called sales and one called returns, the table name would be the name of that table from my database or the name of that sheet in Excel. In this case, because I copied a table onto itself, it's going to give me the original table name and then the table name with a one. So my table is this awkward name, CTR TMP performance. I'll also have a table name called CTR TMP Performance 1. 
which is great. Because now I can write a quick calc that looks for that table name and groups it into an average for me. So let's do that. I'm going to take, oh, let's take respondent, create a calculation. And write just a simple if statement. If table name equals, and this is where I'm going to make a mistake, CTR, TMP, performance one, then average. Else the respondent name. So this will take that whole table that I union, the copy of the data, and group it into a single average, but still give me all of those respondent names. This seems like a lot of work, but let's see what the end result lets us do. We'll call this um, respondent with average. Now I can grab this and drop it on my filter shelf. We'll say all for now. And I can take respondent. I'll leave respondent on color, actually. Let's show this filter. So I can select average. Conveniently, it starts with an A, so it's right on top. If, uh, if your data had things that were alphabetically prior to this, you could put a space in front of it, and that would float it up to the top of your quick filter. Or you could put a number in front of it, just so that it's always up at the very top. So I can show my average. Oh, I need to fix this as well. We'll drop my new calc onto color. There we go. So there's our overall average for, for different respondents. And then I can go down this list and see what the different businesses look like. So this one, these are survey uh, alias names, so they're not very friendly. But this is a specific business that responded to the survey. Uh, they look pretty close to average, actually. Their drive alone rate and their bus rates match those, those big peaks. Center looks about the same. They're not walking quite as much, but it doesn't look like that big of a change. So I can start going down, the, down this list, and I could build a, a pretty useful dashboard, right? And that's easy to use and interact with. So that's one technique to get that sort of average value um, on your radar. This is another great way of using radars. I mean, we've seen them in small multiples. Also with um, two types of overlays, where it's simple enough that you can make out the different dimensions that are on the view, or the, the different values that are on the view. This, um, this is another, I think, excellent use of radar charts. Okay. Dig back into it here. So, what else can we do? What can we do beyond, maybe we'll say a little bit funny, funny visualizations, like radar charts. They have their place, but they're very, they're very specific. What if we really want to dig into our survey data beyond just the, the stacked bars that show a scale, beyond the you know, changes over time? Well, we can do something like we can use R. Our R connection in Tableau has been around for quite a while. We've also just recently added a Python connector. There's so many great statistical packages in both. So it's really, you pick the language that you want to use. Python's really coming up in popularity in data science. Uh, R was really hot for a while, and now it seems like Python is right on its tail for, for these specific uses. The demos that I'm going to show today are in R. Uh, and I'm going to walk you through just very, very quickly what's called a correspondence analysis. Um, it's it's kind of a unique statistical view, so we're not going to really dig into it, but just know that it's something that you can do. And then we'll talk briefly about sentiment analysis, uh, the idea of looking at, at open text fields and open text responses and seeing if they're positive or negative. Um, I threw a link on here. Bora Baran is our analytics PM at Tableau. He has a doctorate in many, many different kinds of math. Um, he, so these are things that he has built. They're available on his blog. Um, so you can download workbooks and see the different mathematical or statistical techniques that he's used. Some other fun stuff on there as well. Uh, so we made round charts. He has an example of making 3D charts in Tableau. 
So taking a, a two-dimensional slice of a 3D space, if you've ever really, really wanted to do that in, in, in Tableau, can really an edge use case, but kind of kind of fun stuff if you are willing to dig into the math. Okay, so we'll start with a correspondence analysis. We're going to stick with our survey data. And I want to say very clearly, I downloaded Bohr's workbook, that's the demo on his website, and just swapped my survey data in. So I didn't really do much of any work here. I also had to install R on my laptop and open up what's called RServe. This is all running locally uh, to a local server that's just running on my laptop. It's pretty simple to do, and we have some great instructions in the Tableau knowledge base. So this is what a correspondence analysis looks like. I hope I'm going to describe it right, uh, because even after having worked with them for a while, I'm not 100% sure I can read them accurately. So a correspondence analysis looks at all of your rows and all of your columns. It averages the rows and the columns out, and then compares the results to that average. So it's a columnar regression analysis. For each value in your data, it says how far off are you from the average? We then take that using R and put it in a two-dimensional scatter plot. So these different items, and I've just selected four out of my 13 dimensions because when there's 13, it gets really crazy to try to read. I have bicycle rate, uh, drive alone rate, DAR is the abbreviation, carpool, and bus. And the idea here is all of my respondents are these blue dots. They're going to cluster around things where those rates are significant or different from that average. So off of that, what we would usually think of like a trend line. A trend line is what we call linear regression. This is more like a two-dimensional regression. And that's about all I can tell you about it because I'm not a statistician. But people ask for this. So know that it's possible. And if you download a workbook from Bora from his blog, it's really easy to just swap these things out and, and say, here you go. I build a little more into this because it's Tableau. Why not build a dashboard? So I can click a specific respondent here and get their actual values in terms of their percentages, see a little distribution. Um, also, just switch between years. So this, these, this R calculation that we're doing, we can have all of our rich interaction with as well. And if I wanted to take it that step further, I could drop right into this worksheet and do some ad hoc. So maybe I want to take that, that uh, year and just compare it side by side and see what are the different sort of shapes of these scatters. Again, I'm not 100% sure what I'm looking at. <laughs> it looks to me like 2016. Things are spread out a little bit more. But, uh, but know that it's possible. And all of the richness that we have in R and Python is, is accessible to you in Tableau. Let's go ahead and head over to sentiment analysis. So my colleague, April Dowd, is in the Bay Area. And she has worked with a client to do uh, a scoring of open, open response survey things. So rate, rate us one to five. Why did you rate us four? Why did you rate us one? Taking that text, and if you have thousands or tens of thousands of responses, you can't read through all of them by hand. It's just not, you just can't, right? You need, a, you need an army. Well, there's a lot of open source packages out there, both in R and Python, that can read that, pull out keywords, and try to put either a positive or a negative label on them, or even go as far using this library called, I'm going to probably say this wrong, Suzette, um, to look at what emotion is being put into the view. So in this case, uh, my colleague downloaded this R library, and it's open source. She added the word emotion association that was right for the industry that she was working with, and it's all downloadable via this link. Wrote a calculation very similar to this. So this is how you call R using the script command. Uh, the same way you call Python, you use a script command, and then put your Python or R code into it. And it gave her a bar chart like this. So I'm not quite sure if you can read these. They're, they're a bit small. But we have um, actual sort of emotions in here. We can see that most of the responses were positive. There was a big chunk that was negative. 
Some of them express trust. Trust is our, is our third value here. Anticipation. So there might have been keywords like, I'm waiting for this, I'm looking forward to this. And this open source library picked it up. Disgust is, in, is interesting. I might want to go look at those specific responses and make sure whatever kind of survey it is, why would someone have that emotion? There's a lot of power in this. For my colleague, this was her first time using R with a client and was able to get results really within a day. It was, it was very, very fast. And that's what I have. There are a couple of other sessions, uh, one specifically on R. Uh, we also have some sessions using Python on a hands-on. We have a statistical class called uh, Get On It Stat, which is happening at 1.30 today and also tomorrow at 10.30. And then right after this session, uh, there's a session called Make Your Mark Beyond Bars and Lines. And that's going to go into making uh, sand key charts, chord diagrams. I think they're going to touch on radar charts. I'd be really curious to see if they're going to use a different technique than what we use today. They likely will. Um, so these are sessions that I would definitely recommend. If you enjoyed the session, go ahead and fill out your survey. Um, if you didn't enjoy the session, go ahead and fill out your survey and, and please leave some feedback. We actually ran uh, internally a sentiment analysis on our survey data from last year. And some of the things that I called out, this, this idea of trying to pull out uh, emotion from it was challenging because most of the default um, lexicons that match positive words and negative words saw things like data nerd as a negative. That was terrible. Um, so we had to go in and manually edit some of those files to say, no, if the nerd's a good thing here. We're, we're good with that. Um, so know that anything you put in here, we're going to do some visualization on and a little bit of analysis uh, using the techniques that we, we talked about today. We definitely have some time. I'd uh, love to do uh, any questions. Um, if you have them, just raise your hand. We have a microphone here in the center if you'd like to walk over. Oh, we have a, a microphone in the center if you'd like to walk over. <laughs> so I may have walked into the session a little bit late, but you said you had these posted somewhere where you can go and look at the files that you were using today? Yes, so uh, these will be available after TC both the slide deck and the workbooks that we walked through uh, will be available for download. Okay. Uh, so you can follow the links there as well. Okay, so it's on the Tableau website? Uh, it'll be on the TC website. You should get an email at the end of TC that says go review your sessions. Okay. I was told the session's also being recorded. So if you wanna hear my voice again and see the slides, uh, these should be posted to the TC website, usually a couple of weeks following TC. And then just one more quick question. You said there may be another session where they're drawing the background images with lines? Um, so I don't know if the... That last one. Um, make your mark. I don't know if they're going to draw the background image. I know the person that's teaching that likes to also do an image map because it's just so much faster and it's a lot less calculation work. If you'd um, like to show the lines, though, I believe it's... Interworks on their blog, you can Google it, has a three-part series on making radar charts. Part three talks about the data transformations that you need to do to draw the lines directly in Tableau. Okay. Excuse me, I think it's Information Lab. Information Lab. Okay. Uh, again, you can find it in a, in a search on your favorite search engine. Uh, it's a three-part series. It's actually a very, very good series and, and worth reading if you're interested in going further with these. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, with radar charts, it shows a lot of area. Does it really, I know one of the um, one of the things that people say are bad about them is that order matters a lot. Um, have you noticed changing the order of your um, points or your nodes makes a difference in the amount of area that's viewed overall? So you can tell a different story based on the order of the points? That is an interesting question. 
Um, it really does depend on your data, right? In, in Tableau, the data talks to us. The data tells us how it wants to be visualized and what's the right way to look at it. And as you continue to look at it, it'll tell you more things. It may say that these points need to be sorted. It's actually pretty straightforward to do. I can go to my respondents. Here are my points. I'll probably have to do it in two places. And oh, excuse me, not respondents, my commute type. So my dimensions, I'm going to sort. And I'll sort them by my rate. And it's chosen to sort the average overall because it's looking at all the data. So now my drive alone is, is at the top. And it gets sort of more of a shell or spiral shape. My data, this doesn't seem quite as easy to read. Other data, it may actually be the best choice to keep it sorted. So yes, you can do it. Um, whether it's a best practice, it, it all depends. It really depends on what your data is telling you. Yes. Hi. Um so this, this example is really very dependent on the, the calculated fields, and, and your second example is really dependent on, on knowing R or Python. And, and those kind of uh, things are, are barriers in my organization for, for getting buy-in to, to Tableau and, and moving projects that were in Excel or in SPS or something into what I think everyone here probably agrees is an otherwise superior platform. Um, not, not everyone can become a computer programmer. Um, what, what kind of plans or intentions are there to, to build any of this into the, the software more natively? So that's an excellent, uh, an excellent question. Um, I think the things that, that we saw at Devs on Stage, the idea of having a heat map, is a great new analytic that's being added in the next, uh, ideally within the next six months. Um, radar charts are not something that I've seen on our roadmap. And the reality is, for, for a number of reasons, they're not always the best visualization. There are really only very specific cases where I think they're valid or best practice. That being said, in Tableau, it does take some calcs to make them. I, in my mind, this is probably the simplest approach. We only have four calcs. There's only one table calc. But it's a bit of a, it's, it's not for a beginner. Um, if I were trying to introduce Tableau in an organization that, that's not quite comfortable writing, writing in-depth calculations or is nervous about displaying the data accurately, a radar chart would not be a chart that I would I would really push out there. I would wait until there's a specific need or request for it. Do you have um, a similar thought about the, the R and Python So that, that's interesting as well. We used to not have correlation native in Tableau, and we've been adding those features in natively. So we now have correlation both as a table function and as, a, as an internal function. When I used to show clients uh, basic R integration, the first thing I would do is type core and the value because it's such an easy thing to do in R. And now it's built in, and I can't do that anymore. So we'll continue to add these statistical functions, uh, really, as, as customers need them. And until we have them built in, we're adding more and more extensibility. So adding Python was a big thing for us. MATLAB integration is also great. Um, that's going to continue to grow as we try to keep our, our platform as open as possible. OK, thank you. Does that, does that kind of answer, yeah. I hope? Yeah. Okay. Hi. Um, so you had showed uh, the average for all respondents and then comparing that to um, the numbers for the actual respondent. So I have a group of respondents and each of them belong to a particular team. Um, would I be able to look at the average for just that team? Would that be like a level of detail expression? Is that supported in the radar charts? And so yeah, we could do that here. If we drag out, so in this case I'll do my average by I'm looking at individual respondents, but I'll filter it for neighborhood. Or in this case, business office location is the name of my field. I can drop that onto my view, and because my union has all of that data still, it's not pre-aggregated for me, I can apply a filter like, well, let's, let's go to Fremont, my happy place. And I can see what this looks like. And let me make sure that we're applying. Did I, oh. So what we're looking at here, is this the average for, oh, it's all locations right now. There's our average. Oh, this respondent is not in Fremont. <laughs> That's interesting. Let me make this a relevant, uh, a relevant filter, and it will work properly. Only relevant values. OK, these are just my respondents in Fremont. And now I can compare to just that region. And this average is my Fremont average. 
Remember, it was a, a little bit weird shape, um, probably because a lot, of, a lot of tabloids like to walk to work. So I could set respondent with average to all and show the business offense location filter to get the average for all? You want to see the average outside of the, this specific business? I want to see the average for the respondents just in a certain office location. OK, and that's, so this is the view that we're showing. That's that one? That's what this is. OK, yes. perfect. So I dropped it onto the filter shelf, specifically dropped it on the filter shelf. And then I needed to make my filter show only relevant values so that I could select respondents just within that zone. OK, thank you. Thank you. Are there mark types other than polygon that work well with radar charts if you want something other than that area effect? Uh, so you can do lined radar charts. The challenge with a non-filled radar chart is that you have to connect your endpoint. So with a polygon, Tableau will connect the dots, and then when it reaches the end, it goes and connects to the beginning automatically. This is our quickest and, and easiest path to get there. Mm -hmm. With a line, we have to give a line a path that connects all the way back to its start. So there's a little bit of data manipulation there for it to really look the way we want it to. It, it doesn't show up, say, a radial line. Oh, you want to see from the center out, yeah, yeah. like a starburst chart? Yeah. Uh, there, that has been done. There are demos of that online. Um, so yes, you could do something like a starburst. Actually, I think Bora's website, borabaran.wordpress.com, has an example of what's called a starburst, where your distance from the center um, shows uh, some sales value, but it's more like a, a sun shape or mm -hmm. um, a line, outward line shape. So that is possible. Okay. Uh, a non-filled radar chart, again, using the technique I've showed today, it doesn't connect the lines. Mm -hmm. um, you can make them connect, but it's a little bit, little bit of work. Usually we have to insert one extra row in our data that can bring us back to the center. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm not, um, going along with that, I, I want to get rapid value. I want to get a rapid insight out of my data. So this is the technique I use because it's the easiest technique in Tableau to get me these shapes that I can then compare. Any other questions? All right. Thank you so much for coming.